The California Legislative LGBTQ Caucus was formed in 2002 to create a forum for state legislators to discuss issues that affect our community and further the goals of equality and justice. California became the first state in the country to form an official caucus of openly LGBTQ state legislators, and we believe honoring and highlighting LGBTQ leaders and our allies will further our goals of inclusion and equality, as well as serving as role models for our youth. Each year, the California Legislature celebrates the month of June as LGBTQ Plus Pride Month. Every member of the LGBT community has a story. After the passage of AB 2969 by Assemblymember Lowe in 2018, the governor officially proclaims every June Pride Month in California. In previous years, the caucus has invited honorees from around the state to attend a day-long celebration that included lunch and special floor ceremonies on the Assembly and Senate floor. Honorees were presented with a resolution commemoration of their accomplishments and contributions to the LGBTQ plus community, and the caucus held an evening reception with Governor Gavin Newsom at the governor's mansion. Unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the California Legislative LGBTQ Caucus's in-person celebration will not take place this year. Pride 2021 will be commemorated with a virtual twist to spotlight LGBTQ honorees for their accomplishments. My name is Kim Tran. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. Hi, my name is Connor Mannix. My pronouns are he, him, his. I am Lloyd Holmes, and my pronouns are he, him, his. My name is Lang Luntow. My pronouns are he, him, his, and I am the Director of External Relations for the Education Trust West. My name is Drew Lloyd and my preferred pronouns are he, him, his. My name is Gary McCoy, and my pronouns are he, him, and his. Hello, everyone. My name is Sunny, Dennis Sunny, and I go by he, him, and his. Hi, everybody. My name is Luis Alfaro, and my pronouns are he, him, his. Dr. Lloyd Holmes. President of De Anza College since July 2020, is an administrator with more than 25 years of experience in higher education and a track record of removing barriers to student success and retention. My skin color, my sexuality has led to my desire and the requirement uh, to work harder merely to prove my abilities. Uh, you know, my experiences related to my race and sexuality have led me to uh, desire to mentor others, to embrace others, uh, to recognize the beauty in others while doing this work known as education. Um, you know, whether that's inside the, the, the buildings at the, of the academy or within the community. Connor Maddox is a civil rights activist and retired program coordinator for Project Trans, the San Diego LGBT Center's first transgender program. When I started working here in San Diego at the LGBT Center, I found um, many folks who needed help and there was no one to help them. We had nobody uh, here in San Diego actually doing much work for the, the trans community or within the trans community. So uh, I joined with some other folks but did a lot of the advocacy work uh, through folks that I met at the center as they came in looking for help. When I first came to the center and asked about trans services, they looked at me like I had two heads. <laughs> they, was, they didn't have anything. and. That was back in uh, 2003, so we've come a long way since then. Roberta Actenberg is a former commissioner of the United States Commission on Civil Rights, appointed by President Barack Obama in 2011. I just want to say thank you. This honor means the world to me. Recognition by our LGBTQ community couldn't be more important. The sense of appreciation I feel is palpable. And again, thank you all so very much. Bob Gentry was the first openly gay elected official in Southern California and the first openly gay mayor in California. Kim Tran works at the intersection of social protest, race, and gender, using a grassroots organizing and transformative justice approach in her anti-oppression consulting in the nonprofit philanthropic and social impact spaces. I am led every day by a very simple guidepost. Be who you needed when you were younger. The person I needed who I was younger didn't exist. I wanted a role model 
and I didn't have one. I never saw a queer Vietnamese woman at the front of a room. I had never seen a queer Vietnamese woman do social justice work in a professional at a professional level. And so I did everything that I wanted to see from a person when I was 16. I wanted to see someone get a PhD. I wanted to see someone be an organizer. I wanted to see someone hold their identities as something to be celebrated and to be proud of. And I do that every hour, every minute, every day. Gary McCoy is the Director of Public Affairs for HealthRight360, which focuses on mental health and substance abuse treatment. He has dedicated his career to public service, and he has worked in the office of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, in addition to serving as co-president of the Alice B. Toklas LGBTQ Democratic Club. I've been through a lot in my life's journey, and what's kept me going is having incredible opportunities that allow me to use my lived experience in helping others. There's nothing more rewarding to me than being able to help others that are on the same path I once was, and to see people turn their lives around. Louise Alfaro, recipient of the prestigious John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation Fellowship, is a queer Chicano writer who was born and raised in the Pico Union District of downtown Los Angeles. He is known for his work in poetry, theater, short fiction, performance, and journalism. I write about my Latino-ness, my Chicano-ness, I write about my queerness, I write about my otherness. I have a foot on one side of each side of the border. Sometimes that border is Mexico and the U.S., but sometimes it's between my queer identity and also the identity that I use in the world. Sometimes it's me as an educator and sometimes it's me as an artist. So I'm always straddling two worlds. I'm always trying to have my foot on each side of the border to be able to see two sides. Dennis Sony leads CMTC's Inland Empire Regional Manufacturing Assistance Team and for the past six years served as the acting chair for the Inland Empire Manufacturing Peer Council CEO program. Queer representation in manufacturing promotes and supports diversity and inclusion. And it is diversity that fuels innovation. And the result of innovation is new California-made products. Drew Lloyd is BAMEC board president and a successful national high-tech trial science and legal communications consultant who has pioneered bringing media and technology into the courtroom in more than 75 jury trials. Ended up moving to Silicon Valley in the early 90s working for IBM. I created Rainbow Wireless as a founder of Rainbow Wireless in the Castro in the mid-90s. I joined the board of the Billy DeFrank LGBT Community Center in San Jose so I could give back to the community. After that, I started early podcasting, and then that's really what took me to my career in trial science and litigation communications consulting today. Part of me is being gay. It's been a part of my entire personality throughout my entire career. Lang Lung Tao is the Director of External Relations for the Education Trust West and has served as the President of the Stockton Unified School District Board of Trustees, the Founding Executive Director of the reInvent Stockton Foundation, and a high school ethnic studies teacher. I'm a third generation public school teacher. My parents taught in Stockton Unified for their entire careers. And so growing up, I spent a lot of time around educators. I think I developed very early on a reverence for the work that the teachers do. And so I just think the ability of a teacher to be able to um, hopefully positively impact um, someone's life trajectory and, and really the, the culture of a community always spoke to me. George Murphy was an icon in San Diego's LGBTQ plus community and a founding member of the San Diego LGBTQ Community Center. He worked as an academic counselor at Grossmont College and was heavily involved in his church. Larry Baza was a dedicated LGBTQ plus activist who devoted his life to advancing civil and workers' rights. He passed away in February, but his legacy continues to reverberate across California, especially in San Diego, where he tirelessly advocated for the arts and greater access to education. Well, I received some help and support when I was first transitioning and I wanted to pass that down to others coming behind me. So when I moved to San Diego, 
um, I met some folks who were organizing um, to be advocates and activists. And so I joined them and uh, I, I found my passion and it was just an amazing experience to be able to go out and, and work in the community and help folks. Uh, I think that helping is something that's just part of me and I've done it all my life. So it was a natural fit. I would train doctors, social workers, and teachers on what it would mean to work with our young folks. And as a part of that work, I met one of my really good friends to this day. Um, during a conversation, we were talking about his job. At the time, he was working in tech, which is known as a liberal industry. And he told me that he would go into the office and would very frequently hear comments that were homophobic or transphobic. And he wasn't out at work. He didn't feel comfortable coming out at work. So folks would be saying things about his identities and had no idea that it would impact him and had no idea that it would be exclusionary or a problem in any way, shape or form. And it got so bad that eventually he quit his job. And that conversation really changed what I do and how I do it. I thought, how many people all over the state of California or the country have similar experiences every day that we can't bring our full selves to work? So I created an entire professional career around supporting people who are queer, who are trans, who are non-binary, to have work environments that feel safe where they can thrive being a gay man in recovery from substance use disorder and having lived on the streets as a young adult my identity has helped me connect with others when so many of us have sometimes very unique reasons for having the many challenges that we do have in common being able to relate on some level while understanding someone else's perspective has been helpful in forming relationships and trust with others to guide them in the right direction my focus on recognizing the individual students and being transparent about, our, who, about who I am became so much more important to me at the two-year institutions. And that is why I absolutely love uh, my, my role at these two-year institutions. It was the two-year institutions that led me to understanding that I needed to be an open role model, uh, that I needed to be someone that individuals uh, could indeed look up to because of, of what I presented to them. I was kicked out of the Marine Corps before it was okay to be gay. Um, although I graduated at the top of my military training classes and schools, I took this as a firing in a sense. I, I was fired because I was gay and I struggled with my acceptance because this happened to me and that impacted my work and my relationships. And it was not until I really started believing in myself, loving myself, um, and loving who I am, that I was able to make my work and myself and my life really begin to flourish. When I was really young, I grew up in a very poor neighborhood in Pico Union, downtown Los Angeles. And the first play that I ever saw was at a burned out lot, uh, a sort of remnant of the 1961 Watts riots. And um, my parents took me to see a play in this burned out lot and it was the most extraordinary thing. And it was Othello, Shakespeare's Othello. And it was a play about class and race and difference. And even as a little kid, I thought, wow, this is amazing. You can be many things. Art is a way of expression. My proudest moments are when clients or even just individual people that I'm working with can exhibit self-reflection and creativity. So it might mean someone reflecting on a microaggression and catching themselves and saying, oh my gosh, I just made a racist comment. I'm so sorry. I realized that was racist. Or an employer switching up the healthcare insurance that they provide so that their trans employees can have access to gender-affirming care. I really don't have specific things that I'm always looking to get from the work that I do in the professional world. I just hope that people can be 
creative in their solutions and humble in how they conduct themselves. Well, the work around institutional climate certainly is important because it's the institutional climate that gives us permission to feel that sense of belonging on campus. It's that institutional climate that speaks to our importance and it's the institutional climate, I think, that truly helps us find spaces for fun. It's the institutional climate that speaks to us. Um, you know, it speaks to our basic needs as a human. The thing I love the most about theater is uh, allowing an audience to wrestle with itself and big ideas. I'm a writer, I'm a playwright, so I write the stories that allow the audience to uh, use their imaginations, to ask themselves the big questions of the day, to wrestle with um, all the big issues in our culture, in our society, that we want to be wrestling with. So writing is a way of creating expression, but it's also a way of thinking. So I was working with an LGBT liaison officer, and after we worked together for a while, uh, he went to the uh, chief of police and suggested we do some trainings for the divisions. Uh, she was very open to that at the time, and so we got started. I trained most of the divisions and uh, at their briefings uh, every shift, and basically I told them about um, gender, what it is, um, I explained terminology, uh, there's trans and non-binary folks uh, about their pronouns and um, at the end I would always tell my story because I truly believe that by telling your own story that's when people really get it and that's when they start to understand uh, about our community and they really change how they feel about us and how they interact with us. What is the next step in queer liberation? Well, I would say that the next step in queer liberation, you know, that, that, well, that's a great question to begin with. But for so many, the next step is to is to accept themselves for for who they are, and really to learn that when they look in the mirror each day, uh, how to love the image that stares back at them, and when we can love our own image, then we can find liberation. There's a lot of work still to be done with politics, politicians, policy, in so many areas. Trans, non-binary issues, LGBTQ youth and young adult challenges, housing and homelessness, and senior issues. Thriving, that's it. The next step in queer liberation is thriving. I want us to really all consider who we would be and what we would do if we weren't burdened by homophobia, if we weren't burdened by transphobia, if we weren't burdened by racism. Thriving looks differently for every single person, but that's the work. The work is figuring out who we would be without all of these things holding us down and eliminating the root causes of that oppression so that we can be exactly who we we're always meant to be. What I would say to you is, Please don't give up. My heart breaks for you every day when I hear about these things and I keep you in my thoughts. Please, if you can and it's safe, come out and show people who you are. Tell people your story because that's really important. Well, I think it's political power, right? I think it's also economic power. I think it's also diversity. How do we embrace every single part of our queer community? How do we um, welcome the disabled? How do we welcome otherness into our community so that we are able to really see the vast diversity that exists inside of us? That's liberation. Liberation is the acceptance of all of us, not just the part that we see in ourselves. Receiving this honor means the world to me. It's reaffirming that I'm in the right place and doing the right work. It reminds me that I'm not my past and hopefully shows others that you can get past anything if given the opportunity. Wow, anytime somebody sees you in the world, sees you, I think we are acknowledged as real beings, human beings, as living, breathing uh, bodies in space. To be uh, given an award or an honor is to be uh, seen in the world. Uh, a writer's life is a very private, a very lonely life. It's a life built in isolation. 
Uh, most of the time it's me and words, writing words. So when something like this comes along, I become very conscious of the fact that community is the center of our experience. We are all members of a community and to be acknowledged by the community is the greatest prize that one can get. Thank you for this. I am honored to receive this recognition and it makes me feel good and proud and validated for all the work that I've done. Receiving this honor means, means so much to me. It places value on the work that I've already done, but it's also a reminder that this work that I've done is only just the beginning. And I see it as a call to, to do even more, uh, to, to sit in the intersections of race, sexuality, uh, and so many other spaces where I can be impactful. Um, because this work is to impact uh, generations and generations to come. I'm deeply humbled. Um, I hope that I can someday be um, as powerful um, and as impactful as Dr. Eggman and as, and as the many you know, queer um, leaders who, who kind of paved the way for me to be able to live and love and do the work that, that I, I, I hope is serving my community. I am deeply humbled by it. I realize that there are many uh, who were nominated throughout the state and I am deeply grateful that you've recognized my work uh, for the past 17 years that I've done here in San Diego and I want to thank you all because without the California legislature passing so many laws to protect us to make our lives better uh, things would be very different and we always seem to have your support and I, it's amazing to me um, how many folks up at the State House um, are always there for us. And uh, so thank you all for all your work that you've done and for all your support that you've given to the trans community. And uh, thank you for this award. I am deeply honored and, and so very pleased. Receiving this honor is a reaffirmation of a commitment I'm making to myself and to my community that I won't stop doing the work that gets this kind of attention. This award means I am on the right path. I am fighting for the world that I hope we can live in. And I can do this and make myself proud and make my mom proud. LGBTQ plus leadership is not about organizing people. Instead, it's the principle of individuals leading from their difference, their creative uniqueness. Not to assimilate into the dominant culture, but to liberate and elevate those oppressed by the dominant status quo. It's not about assimilating. It's about always being different and liberating from what the status quo is. Evan Lowe, thank you so much for this honor.